This problem was actually shared to me by one of my students and I really like this. I think this is going to be super useful for anyone doing the TMUA or the MAT. I can see this type of problem coming up. Let's have a look. We have f of x uh, is a polynomial such that f of x leaves remainder i when divided by x minus i for each i in the set 1, 2, 3. So for example, if I divide f of x by x minus 2, that gives me a remainder of 2. If I divide f of x by x minus 3, I get a remainder of 3. We want to find the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. Now this is a really, really nice problem because it actually tests uh, if we understand a concept rather than just knowing a specific rule. Because this question here is screaming out to use the remainder theorem. But the issue is the remainder theorem only works when you're dividing f of x by a linear factor. You can't really apply it when you've got a quadratic or a cubic in this case. In order to answer this, we really need to understand what we mean by a remainder. So I'm going to write out a definition. Uh, I'll use functions a of x and b of x and stuff. So we say a of x, um, a polynomial, let's just assume a of x is a polynomial, uh, gives remainder r of x. In this case, we're only looking at constants, but I may as well generalize it to remainders where the remainder is like a polynomial upon division by some polynomial b of x if there exists some q of x, um, a polynomial, all of these are polynomials, uh, such that a of x equals b of x times q of x plus r of x. So this is the definition or what we mean by when, when we say something gives a certain remainder. And we're going to be using this definition here. So we have the f of x leaves a remainder of, let's start with i equals 1, when we divide it by x minus 1. And so therefore f of x equals x minus 1 times some function g of x, some polynomial g of x, plus 1. Amazing, great. Except we don't know anything about g yet, or we actually do know some stuff about g. And the way we're going to do that is by looking at what happens when x is 2. Well, when x is 2, we get the f of 2 is 2 minus 1, which is 1, times g of 2 plus 1. And we're told that that's 2. And so that tells us that g of 2 equals 1. And so in particular, g of 2 minus 1 is 0. Or we can just leave g of 2 as 1 and use the remainder theorem on this. And so that tells us that g of x is going to be x minus 2 times some other polynomial, h of x, plus 1. <clears throat> Amazing, cool. Let's plug this into what we have for f of x over here. This is x minus 1 times this g of x, which we'll write like this. x minus 2 times h of x plus 1. And then plus this one that's out here. Amazing, except now we've got h of x, and maybe you can guess where we're going with this. We're going to work out what h of x is by using the fact that f of 3 is 3. Again, using the remainder theorem. So f of 3 is 3. So f of 3, if we plug that into here, we get 3 minus 1 is 2 times 3 minus 2, which is 1, times h of 3, plus 1, plus 1. And if we expand that out, 2 times h of 3, plus 2, plus 1 is plus 3. And that's supposed to equal 3. And so in particular, this means that h of 3 is 0. Awesome. And so therefore, h of x is just going to be x, using the remainder theorem or the factor theorem, this is h of x is just going to be x minus 3 times some other polynomial. So this is going to be x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 times some function, let's call it j of x, plus 1, plus 1, like so. And that's supposed to be a bit of a bracket there. Awesome. And so now if we just expand this, we get x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 times j of x, plus x minus 1, and then plus 1. So those two cancel out. And so f of x is actually just equal to x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 times some function j of x plus x. And so therefore, uh, the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 is just x, like so. And this is a rigorous proof or right, rigorous derivation to this answer. Depending on if this was like a TMUA question, obviously you could have multiple choice, so you could perhaps use that to your advantage. But this is the way that I really encourage you to think about 
questions that they have remainders in. You can use the remainder theorem, you can use the factor theorem, but they're very, very limited. You really need to understand what we mean when we say uh, a function gives a certain remainder. Anyway, if you have got the TMEA this week, best of luck, and I will catch you in the next one.